If you just joined in and you're wondering why all these bits are over the floor and my car is suddenly looking like this then stay tuned so i know there's not a ton of interest on the channel with the japanese cars and the subarus and that because i've tried uploading videos in the past and um they've not done very well so i haven't really included them much so we're just doing the voxels and the falls mainly but just done a bit of work under here the engine I just said to you it's been rebuilt fully in the past and it's just as uh, clean as the moment it left. Try and get under it. So you can see like all the heads, everything, all the washers, the whole lot was brand new when I done it. Um, anything that needed replacing, I mean anything on that engine got replaced. Um, it's a very high spec, semi closed deck, thick wall uh, engine. Um, even replace like all the oil coolers and everything because the, once the swarf goes into them, they're knackered. But yeah, so what I'm just doing today is, so the car didn't have a subframe um, and it's this big part here, all the way down up to there. It didn't have one because they go rotten and what people do is instead of getting a new one, they just take them out because they're not a structural thing. They just stiffen up the front end on the STIs. So what I've just done is I just got all the fitting kit and we've got um, a new subframe on there now to stiffen up the front end. We've also got a nice H-brace. You can see like a Cusco style one. Obviously it's not a real Cusco one, so just bolting that in at the minute. And uh, we've also put in a white line front anti-roll bar, similar to the ones on, I put on the Astra. So a lovely thick roll bar on the front now. So the front end's gonna feel so much more stiffer. A, um, a lot of these Subarus, they really understeer. They're really understeery, um, and you can get like an anti-lift kit for the wishbones and everything. I won't go too much into it because most of the people won't be interested in the Jap stuff. But yeah, so that's just what I'm doing at the minute. So I thought I'd give you a little look at other cars other than the Vauxhalls and the Folds. So I wasn't joking when I said the paintwork is atrocious on this car at the minute. Six months of neglect, that's what it's going to get you. So I went over that side quickly. I've given it a rinse, Dan. I've uh, got some fairy liquid water because there's no need to go over it with anything else at the minute. And you can see all the contaminants in the paint, look at the state of that. So we're gonna go over it with um, a clay bar quickly, um, iron out, get some of the iron out, the paintwork. Uh, that's about the worst part. You can see I've took the side strips and everything off because I've got some nice freshly painted new stuff to go on there as well. I'm um, gonna replace this bonnet for um, a metal one for temporarily so I can get this one painted because the fiberglass bonnet needs a refresh. Um, so I can get this bodywork back up to scratch. The rear of it is pretty good. Um, took the spats off quickly. So you can probably hear that. Paint works like sandpaper at the minute. So I went over the other side of the bonnet. And it's as smooth as glass with just a little bit of a clay bar. And then I'm gonna compound that and give this thing some protection for the uh, summer months. So look at that mess of that already. Just that was one pass on here. Um, it's got it very smooth already, but there's still loads of contaminants. So I'm going to go over it with iron out now. I'm going to use a more aggressive um, clay bar I've got. This is quite a soft one. It's a built hamber one, but it's not very tough. It's really for just for taking over and going over of a maintenance. But I need to get some proper aggression in there. So I've got some uh, Maguire stuff that's a lot tougher. And then I'm going to iron out that and then give it a compound. Please bear in mind when I'm doing this, I'm no detailer, as I keep saying. It's funny because about 10 years ago, there was no such thing as detailing. Now everyone's a professional detailer, but um, I'm just someone that knows how to wash a car. So no idea why this iron out from auto finesse smells like rotten eggs. Um, just went over the whole roof of it. It's going to start going purple in a minute. It's going to be tons of iron in that roof. So that's been on there for like 30 seconds now. So a minute, and you can see it's already started to bleed. How much iron's in the top of that roof. The thing is with roofs, everything just settles on the top of it. It's not so bad on the side of the body, but on roofs and bonnets and boots, everything just settles. I'm just gonna quickly go over the roof again with this much, much tougher stuff from Meguiar's. It's like a hard clay. It's really, really sticky. It's gonna get rid of anything. Even though it's like glass at the minute, it's still contaminants. You can see in the paint, even after the iron out. So look at the state of that. You can see all the iron coming out of it straight away. It's only been on about a minute. Looks like I've run over a camel or something. Um, I actually run over a deer once down the uh, dual carriageway and it smashed all my bumper up, all the exhaust system, everything. And it actually did look like this, something out of a Halloween movie. I had to scrape it off from the bottom of the car. 
absolutely stunk after being cooked by the exhaust. So luckily, the paintwork on the side of the car is nowhere near as bad. It's actually quite smooth still from where I clay barred it about six months ago. So it ain't as bad as the roof, which is uh, handy because it won't take as long. But you can see now I'm using that Meguiar's clay. This stuff's a lot better than that Bill Hamber stuff that's uh, too soft in my opinion. This stuff gets anything out of the paint. At the minute I'm just using Ferry Liquid because this car hasn't been polished or nothing. So there's no need to use a pH neutral um, quick wax or anything like that. So just give it a proper scrub over and then I can get some polish on it, compound it. Get it back looking good. So you can see there that the uh, clay bar is not really picking up much. The side of the car is pretty good, which is handy. It wasn't take, won't take nowhere near as long. So as this is probably the last time I'll be clay bar in this car this year, I thought I might as well do it properly. And uh, I've took the trim off. You see I have the wing mirror. I've took off the trim along here. I took off the wind deflectors. And that way I can get rid of all this grime because it's built up over the winter. I'm also going to do the same on the rear quarter. I'm going to take unbolt this completely and take it out. Um, and that way this trim along here, you can see there's like grime and everything underneath it. I'm never going to get out. So I might as well just take this out, pull this out, do it properly once. So look at this nasty stuff on the window. You can see you don't even see it when the trim's on, but look at that. And now I've cleaned this car already. You can see it just sticks underneath the trim against the window and you just can't get rid of it. So these super soft auto finesse detail brushes, so perfect for this. Just dip it in a bit of fairy liquid. And get rid of any grime or crap and then you can go over it the clay bar. But they're basically just a, a soft paintbrush, but with a plastic head instead of most paintbrushes have got a metal head. But if you can go into your hardware store, you can get these for much cheaper than the detail places sell them for super soft bristles and just make sure you've got the plastic head on it because if you've got the metal head you're going to end up scratching the paintwork every time you uh, clean your car always open this petrol cap up and wash inside here they rust terribly if you don't clean them in here underneath this lip they all start rotting out this one's nice and clean i always keep it clean you've got to love all this grime and that when you open the boot where it doesn't run off properly you can see it builds up and you've got to clean it out every now and then so i just go around here with that soft detail brush Get rid of all that nasty mold and grit and whatever else is in there you can see it just doesn't flush away you get stuck on these lights starts making these lights moldy so the roof trims are off as well now so i must do a proper job while i'm here they, uh, they take no time to get off normally in here it's full of green mold and everything but this car has them off quite regularly these just fill up with crap as soon as you start washing this roof it just floods into here normally it doesn't drain off you can see and then starts running down the back of the boot you see how green it gets really quickly so it's well worth pulling these off quickly love these brushes don't damage any of the paintwork never scratches any of the paintwork so soft get into all the little cruddy bits you see how much crap's coming out of there just with a couple of passes and even though they look quite clean so go and pull yours off and i bet you it's all green mold underneath them so there's the rear quarter window out you can see all the scum and the the mold that grows underneath the trim that you're never going to get to if you don't take it out so people without removable windows are going to be a nightmare for them you can see i took the spoiler off as well got all that crud underneath there so we can get to cleaning this up now So rear lights as well are out now. I've had these out a few times. You can see there's not a ton of build up behind here, but normally this is all green in here. Um, it's only really got a little bit of crud in there, so not too bad. And then it may get a lot easier when I come to compounding the uh, paintwork. I won't have to worry about catching it on the lights or in the windows or anything. So I'm using the good old Meguiar's compound. It's, it's not that um, abrasive, this stuff. It's nice when you just want to take the top edge off and you don't need to get loads of scratches out. This has been done loads of times in the past. Um, I was using a uh, soft medium um, pad for compounding, but I've gone over to a medium hard now. It's a lot harder because it weren't getting everything off. I went over with a couple of passes here and it's as smooth as glass now. Absolutely beautiful. So you can see how nice that looks quite close up. 
no scratches or nothing so that's just compounded so when it's all polished up it's gonna look nice so i don't know about you but when you start um cleaning a car that's been filthy for so many months you think god it looks a right state but when you start cleaning it up you think oh there's some life in the old girl yet you know get this uh, paintwork back up again get it looking clean like it was last summer so this rear quarter is coming up beautifully absolutely perfect it's, i'm lucky that i had this car from i've had it for a, a lot of years now so it never got a chance to get in the hand of someone who abused it it was a low mileage car when i got it so all the paintwork is very good on it still really straight so it comes up lovely So I've just done a couple more passes on the roof and it started to come out really nice. See it right close up, how shiny she looks. Um, you can see I haven't done that section there and how dull the finish is at this end compared to the, the passes I've just done. So that's just compound as well. There ain't no polish or anything on that. So the lights start to go a little bit, but you can see that the car started to get a proper shine on it. Now the whole roof's done. That's just compounded, not um, polished or anything. But with silver, you probably really won't get any more than that out of it, even with a good polish over it. But you can see how straight the car is. Uh, while I'm on the subject, when is the first time that you heard the word detailer? Because when we used to have um, like cleaning sessions back in the day with the RS turbos and the cozies and that, um, it was just the maximum you had is one mate was a valitor. And then about three or four or five years ago, all of a sudden this term detailing come out. And now every uh, kid, 17-year-old, with a Volkswagen Polo and BBS wheels, they're all detailers. And then it's a competition about who can get the most weirdest sanding named carnival wax with different products and everything in it. We all do the same thing. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get some polish on this now. You can see how straight she is. Um, see the reflection. And then we're going to get some wax on her and actually protect her for a while. But I've got a, this is the whole of this side done. Going to get this window in quickly. Um, and I've got some new trim pieces for here, um, the GSI ones. Uh, so I don't need these extra clips inside here. So I've took all them out. This one's got to be screwed from the inside. So I've got to take the door card off. So I'm going to change over to a soft pad now, which I just put on. And I'm just going to use old Meguiar's Ultimate Polish. So I really get along well with that. I've got tons of different polishes, but I like that the most. Who else remembers that pink wax that you used to be able to get? I don't even remember what it's called now, but it was one of the best waxes and polishes that I've ever used. I wonder if you can still get it. If you can, let me know the name of it. So the rear quarter's all polished now. I ain't put no wax on it yet, but I want to get this rear quarter in before it gets dark. And then I can put these trims back in. I'm going to stain them black again. So they're nice. They're grey at the minute. They're just uh, faded. It's nice when you've got some good paintwork to work with. Instead of having like scratches, chips and that everywhere. You can see it in depth, no scratches or that anywhere. There you go, focus. So I've just went over it with a wax now as well. You can see the shine it's got on it now. Um, it's getting dark now, but you can get a good reflection. Got the big light on it, so you'd see any imperfections. You can see how that paint's come up. Not a scratch in sight. So I'm really happy where that's come out. Um, that's one whole side done and the roof done as well. So the roof's come out to the same standard. Try and focus, there you go. So I'm gonna start putting the trim back on and the windows and everything back in. Um, this side's completely finished. So this is what happens when you tread on clay bar. I know some people as well that would reuse that. <laughs> it's a shame that silver doesn't show up the gloss as well, but um, that's just the way the color is, a black color or whatever wood. Um, I'm going to stick some of this extra gloss protection over. It's like a, a sealant and um, proper, proper uh, allows the water to bead off it. When I put this on, I'll run some water over the top of it and you'll see how it beads. 
So I'm going to put the uh, wing mirrors back on. I've just put the trim back in for the window. Uh, I'm not going to put these in yet because I'm thinking of painting them because they're always fading. Don't matter how much I dye them. I'm going to give the windows a quick clean up as well. You can see when that stuff dries, it dries very similar to a polish. So you just buff it out and it will give you a really high gloss. Obviously you won't see it as much on the silver. It's probably one of the worst colours for it. But seeing it on a black or a grey or a blue car really, really does make it shine. So these are the trim pieces I've got going on the car. Um, you can see these are GSI ones. They've got the, the raised ridge on the side of them um, as opposed to the SI Turbo, which are flat across here. The only difference is on the uh, GSI, they're like stuck on, taped on. Instead, on the SI Turbo, they clip on. So these, when these go on, these sort of go on permanently. Same with the arch spats. So here's a comparison between the two. These were originally black on the cars. You can see how they're flat across the face, whereas the GSIs have like a ridged effect. Don't really make much difference, but you can see on the back of these, they clip in, as opposed to on the back of these, they glue on. So it's looking a lot, lot cleaner. I'll just give the wheels a quick wash over. They ain't been washed in a long time. Loving how clean the engine bay's looking. Can't wait to be doing the painting up all the uh, chassis legs and that. Just got to get the trim pieces on. Just got the wing mirrors on. Um, got the wind deflectors on quickly. So the car was looking a bit weird without its front splitter on, so I thought I'd bolt that back on quickly. I've got to make a new fresh one up, but that one will do for now. You can see I've got the uh, side splits on it as well. I've um, got to put them trim pieces on. Engine bay's looking lovely and clean. Really happy with that's come out. I'm going to take off that fiberglass bonnet because I've got a metal one I'm going to put on um, so I can paint up that fiberglass one again and possibly put some vents in it. Uh, the metal one, the difference with the weight between this fiberglass one and the metal one is something like 15 kilos, so it's well worth uh, keeping it on, but it's had a bit of a battering over the years and needs a bit of a paint and a repair. So I've got this one over here that I'm going to fit temporarily. It's got a few battle marks on it, a couple of scars and dents, but I buff them, most of these out. And um, I've just got to cut in the aero catches in here normally. And then I'll put that on um, just so I can like repair that fiberglass one, get it painted, make it look a mint again and possibly put some vents in it. So when I take this bonnet off to give it some repairs uh, and a lick of paint, I'm going to put in these bonnet vents. Now these bonnet vents are fully functional. They're not like a Focus RS Mark II bonnet vent that people just bolt on or stick onto cars. These are off a British touring car. These are off the Opal British touring cars. They obviously put them in the Chevrolet. Uh, so there was proper motorsport. I think that was like 140 quid. A uh, stupid amount of money for um, a bonnet vent. But um, yeah, normally flat to the bonnet. Obviously they don't sit raised like that. So uh, yeah, what do you think? There's no way that everyone's gonna like them. Everything in the world, one person likes black, one person likes white, one person likes blue, the other likes red. So you can never build a car that everyone's gonna like. But um, yeah, ultimately it's your own decision, it's your own choice. So yeah, they're gonna be put in there just for cooling properties. So in addition to that, in the new front bumper, I'm gonna be running brake ducts. So I'm gonna run the ducts along that front splitter straight to them brake discs. Uh, so we can get some cooling because uh, I don't want to get you getting fade. Uh, summer's coming up, so there's going to be a lot of heat about. So I think the final test has got to be the uh, the old pouring some water over it. Show you how good how good the water runs off it now. So you can see it's uh, proper protected. I don't have to do that for a while. About every six months, I normally do it. Give it a top up. But it went a long time without having it. So now I can get a video of that. I can put this up on Facebook, get a beading photo, and I'm gonna get a sticker made up. I'm gonna put just under there, I'm gonna change that, and it's gonna be Aaron Unknown's Detailing Services. Then uh, within a week, I'm gonna start up the detailing company, take a few pictures of like the water, like that. And then I'm gonna have customers flocking to me.